Women. Patricia Gibson. Thank you, Mr. Chair, and I'd like to thank and congratulate the member for Newcastle upon Tyne Central for bringing this debate forward today. And again, we're focusing on the effect of the state pension age on working class women. And I appreciate that this motion is about focusing on those, those women who have been informed with very little notice that the pension they expected to receive at 60 years old has moved further away from them, upsetting plans for retirement, perhaps interfering with caring responsibilities, disrupting plans to spend time with grandchildren, perhaps to allow sons and daughters to enter or re-enter the workforce. And these women, which the motion refers to as working class, are, as, been, as has been pointed out, can most easily be identified as those women who do very demanding physical jobs for low pay. Jobs that require good health, perhaps where one is expected to stand or be on one's feet for long hours, perhaps where physical strength is required. And such jobs, as we've heard quite graphically, cannot easily be done by many women in their 60s. When we're in our 60s, like it or not, we are past our physical best. We expect to be able to take our lives a little bit easier after a lifetime of work. And why should women not have expected this, given that, given that the contract they had with the state, pay in and you'll get paid out at 60? Why should they not have expected this? Any change to this must be, has to be, planned well in advance. And we know that these women were not paid this courtesy. They were not afforded this justice. And I think, Mr Chair, this is now the sixth or seventh debate. I've actually lost count on the injustices done to the women affected by these changes. These women are angry. They are angry that those controlling the levers of power do not seem to be listening. They are angry that those with the power to put this right are stonewalling them and stonewalling all those who are speaking up for them. They are angry that they have to fight, to organise, to march, to demonstrate, to agitate, to win back what was so wrongfully, so cruelly taken from them, in some cases with shockingly, appallingly little notice. And I believe they are right to be angry, and I suspect many speakers in this chamber are angry on their behalf. And with all the carry-on about Brexit and using EU nationals as bargaining chips, turning away child refugees from war-torn countries, nuclear missiles that don't appear to project in the direction in which they're fired, in amongst all the other important and tragic things on the political agenda, these women are determined that their voices will not be drowned out. The UK government believes, it would appear, that if it sits tight, these women will go away. They will not go away. They have nowhere to go. They need their pensions so that they can live with dignity and some kind of peace of mind. This is not pin money that they seek. It is their rightful pension which they need to pay their bills, to put food on the table, to keep a roof over their heads. The government hopes and believes these women will go away. Where should they go? And where can they go without justice? Thousands and thousands of pounds have been robbed from these women since they must have seemed an easy target with the austerity agenda. If the government wants to equalise pensions, then fine. No one here is arguing against that. But you should have done it properly. And by that I mean the government should have given these women, all of these women, fair and proper notice. That's it. It's not complicated and it shouldn't be controversial. As it is, we have the appallingly cruel situation where women who have worked all their lives, often suffering pay discrimination relative to their male counterparts, being denied the dignity and financial support in their retirement that they need and that they deserve, the pensions they contributed to. If these contracts with the state can be so easily disregarded disregarded, altered without proper notice. What does that say about our citizens' relationship with the state? If a private pension provider had behaved as the government is behaving now, I am sure that the pension ombudsman would have something to say on the matter. And it looks as though the only recourse left to the women robbed of their rightful pensions is through the courts. And that is a disgrace that they've been left with this option in the face of intractable, stubborn, heartless lack of movement from this government. 
I wish all these women well in their fight for justice, and I and my party will stand beside them for as long as justice is denied to them. This is not a dispute about affordability, as the UK government often likes to pretend. These women contributed to the state, paid their taxes, and did all the things they believe they should as good citizens. If every global organisation, every business, and every individual in the UK paid their taxes, instead of so many of them doing all they can to avoid doing so, there would be more money to go around. Instead, we are seeing what we too often see, ordinary citizens at the bottom of the heap punished, whilst those who actively avoid contributing to the Treasury appear to be protected. People are alienated from politics. They feel that the system is always stacked against the ordinary, hard-working, decent folk who go quietly about their business. And there is no more stark example of that than the way women born in the 1950s have been treated. Well, the waspy women will not be quiet. They will continue to raise their voices to cry out against this injustice, and we in the SNP will cry out with them. The, S the, the women will not, start, not allow their quest for justice to be dismissed. Wasps can sting, and the government needs to watch out. All that is required for justice for decency, for honesty to prevail, and this argument will end. It's not too late for the government to do the right thing. Given these, given these women the pensions they are due, no more, no less. And let's put this whole sorry, awful business behind us so that these women can now enjoy their well-deserved retirement after a lifetime of work. Here, 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 here.